Okay, this is the first video for un unit one um, on forces. So this cut this whole video will cover all of the ch the information from chapter four in your textbook. All right, so a force is simply a push or a pull exerted on an object. So if you push on something or pull on something, you're exerting a force. Okay, and forces can cause objects to speed up, slow down, or change direction as they move. So if you remember from the previous unit, if something speeds up, slows down, or changes direction, that means that an acceleration happens. So if a force causes something to speed up, slow down, or change direction, that means that force causes an acceleration. All right, so if we look at this over here, this little bit, this little picture, it's called a free body diagram with these vectors drawn on it, okay? So you need to look at the forces acting on an object. Um, so when you look at this, we have your hand is pushing on the book. On the book. That's represented by this F hand on book. The table's, the table's holding it up, but also gravity is pulling it down. So we have to draw these three arrows, which are called vectors. And this, this air diagram right here is called a free body diagram. So if we drop a book, gravity causes it to go down. Okay, so in this previous example here, if the table was gone and we just held the book and let it go, gravity would pull it down. Okay. So it's called a field force. A field force doesn't need to have contact. So like the, the gra gravitational force between the sun and the earth is a field force. The gravitational force of anything that's above the earth is a field force. Okay. So forces come from interactions with things, as we're going to see. So, but with, without both the system, the object the object that's being interacted on and whatever is pulling it, there the force does not exist. And the drawing that that we that I showed you was a free body diagram, and you can figure out what's going on with a free body diagram. Okay, so again, this drawing right here is a free body diagram. So according to this, there's no force going backwards to kind of counteract this hand and book thing. So the book is going to go that way, would go in the direction of the which way your force is going. Okay, we're going we're gonna to walk through kind of an experiment here. Um, so you can imagine that you have this little cart that you attach a rubber band to, that you put a pencil on, that you're going to pull. Okay? And you're going to stretch the rubber band for a constant distance of one centimeter to put what's called a constant force, so a constant pull on this thing, and you're going to get some data. And the data that you get, if you do the experiment, and you can do this at home if you want to try it, um, over time, if you pull it for a certain amount of time, this is what you should get for one, if you stretch a rubber band a centimeter. So from like a, a loose rubber band, pull it a centimeter. Over time, you're going to get a graph that looks like this with your velocities. Now notice this is, this is not position, this is velocity. So your velocity is increasing the, 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 the farther you pull it, the longer in time and pull it. So this indicates, as shown by the motion diagram here, my velocity vectors are getting longer. But my acceleration, because I have a constant slope, my acceleration is constant. Okay? And that's a kind of a big deal. So my acceleration is constant because my, the slope of my velocity versus time graph is constant. Okay? So now if we extended this to look at how acceleration and force play out, instead of doing one one centimeter stretch over and over again, you stretch it even farther, you find out that your accelerations get bigger. And you end up with an acceleration versus force graph. Okay. And the unit of force is the Newton, which you'll find out in a little bit. So if we plot this, we find out that it's linear, that the force versus acceleration is linear. So as the force goes up, so does the acceleration. If you kind of think about this, it makes sense. If you push something harder, it speeds up more quickly. And if we look at, if we add different masses on things, 
you get different slopes. Okay, so I increase the force applied, my acceleration goes up, but it goes up the biggest if I only have one cart compared to two or three. Okay. So what this means is that the greater, the, the greater force is needed to make an acceleration when you have more mass. Okay. And the slope of the, the slope depends on the total mass of your carts. And notice, if you notice, the slope says one over m. So the slope actually gets you the inverse of your mass. Okay. So what we can do this if we say that the slope is equal to one over the mass, then if we rearrange the equation, instead of it being acceleration divided by force as one over mass, we can say acceleration is one is force divided by mass, or force equals mass times acceleration, which is a very important mathematical equation that we're going to use quite a bit in this class. Okay, so the equation here, a, a equals F over M, shows that the force applied to an object causes an object to accelerate directly. Greater the force, greater the acceleration. It also shows that if your mass increases and your force remains constant, your acceleration decreases. Okay, make sure you write down this equation. A equals F over M, also written F equals M over A, and finally it can be written M is equal to F divided by A. Okay. Again, if, it, if you double the force, you double the object's acceleration. They are directly related to each other. Okay. And again, if you apply the same amount of force to several objects, the one with the most mass will have the smallest acceleration, and the one with the least mass will have the greatest acceleration. And you should hopefully kind of know this. And if you apply the same force to different objects, the one that has the most mass will have the smallest acceleration. Okay, and again, force is called the unit. The unit of force is called the Newton. Um, it's the force needed to, to cause a one kilogram mass object to accelerate at about a one meter per second per second rate. Um, a Newton's about a quarter of a pound. I'm gonna give it that way. All right, so. If you have two force vectors that are acting on each other, um, if they're going in the same direction, you add them up, like we did in, in one of the first one of the first lectures that we did. Um, so if you're going with, like if you're running and you're going with the wind, you add up the like you add up the speed vectors. You do the same thing here. So if two things are pulling in the same direction, you add them up. And if they're opposite directions, like a tug of war, you subtract them, and the direction the vector is in the direction of the bigger one. And the sum of all the forces is called the net force. So if you add up all your vectors and it's all going in, and it's going in one direction, you still have a net force. Okay. So you might have heard of Newton's laws of motion. The acceleration that we've that we've dealt with is acceleration is equal to f over m is called Newton's second law of motion. So if you have a, a net force divided by the mass, that gets you the acceleration. You have a greater force acting on an object that's going to accelerate more. You, as your mass gets bigger, if your force remains constant, you have a little smaller acceleration. Okay. Newton's first law. Okay, so when an object is, so what's the motion of an object when no force is acting on it? It's you think about it. So it's if it, there's no net force acting on it, it's not speeding up, it's not slowing down, it's not changing direction. Okay, it's going to keep doing what it's doing. Um, lots of people have done out, done different types of experiments with this. Um, Galileo was one of them. And what he really found was that if there's nothing to speed it up or slow it down, the object's going to keep doing what it's doing, which is what Newton's first law says. Okay. So in the absence of a net force, the motion of both a moving object and a stationary object continues as it was. So if something's sitting still, it's going to stay there until something causes it to move. Um, if something's moving, it's going to go at a constant speed in a straight line until something makes it move. That's Newton's first law of motion. Often called the law of inertia. 
So an object is at rest. When we remain at rest, an object moving will continue to move in a straight line. Okay, often called the law of inertia, because the inertia is a tendency of an object to resist a change in motion. Okay, an object's at rest, it tends to stay at rest. If its object's moving at a constant velocity, it'll keep moving. Okay, until something slows down. The reason that balls stop when they as they're rolling is because friction slows them down. The friction is a force that slows them down. Okay, force is a result of interactions. So if there's interactions, then you're gonna have you, the inertia is gonna be acted on and it's gonna stop. Okay, so a word, a fun little word here. If, if net forces on an object are zero. So if there is no net force, it's in a, called a state of equilibrium. Okay, so if objects are sitting still, they are in a state of equilibrium. The forces acting on it are balanced. Okay, or if a moving object's moving at a constant speed in a straight line, has a constant velocity, it has an equilibrium force acting on it. Okay, a net force, a, a net force simply makes something not in equilibrium. Okay, these are just different types of forces. Um, we're going to deal with many of these. Friction we'll deal with. We're going to talk about something a little bit later called the normal force. It's acting perpendicular to the surface. We're going to talk about springs. Tensions are like ropes. Thrust, like from rockets. And then the weight, your weight force, is simply the force due to gravity. The force pulling you down due to gravity. Okay, so... If we look back to Newton's second law here, we're going to use the math problem here. Okay, we have a ball dropping. The system is the ball acting on, being acted on by gravity. Okay, now the force acting on something from a larger object is the weight. So your weight is really just your force being acted on, your mass being acted on by gravity is your weight. Okay, so if we want to figure out the weight of the system, the weight of the of this basketball. We know that acceleration, okay, via the acceleration due to gravity, the acceleration due to gravity is about 10 meters per second squared. It's not negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Sometimes we just call it an even 10, okay. We know this because if we drop an object, it speeds up as it drops. You drop it, the velocity vectors in this motion diagram get bigger, but they get bigger at a constant rate, which means our acceleration is consistent. So... If we look at force net, Newton's second law, F equals M times A, okay? But we know that A is really just what's called the acceleration due to gravity. Then we can say that the force of gravity is the mass of the object times acceleration due to gravity, or G. So if you know that, then you can solve, if you know the, if you know the, the force acting on it, you can solve for the mass. Or if you know the mass, you can solve for the force. The force on the, these, these forces are measured in newtons. Mass is measured in kilograms. Acceleration is in meters per second squared. Okay. So both the force and the acceleration are downward. Your net force will go downward in this case. Again, the magnitude of the object's weight, the force acting on it from gravity, is equal to the mass times acceleration due to gravity. So a scale. Basically, a scale works. You have two different forces. Okay, when you stand on the scale, the spring on the scale exerts an upward force on you because you're in contact with it. So the spring's pushing pushing you up. Gravity's pulling you down. Okay, because you're not accelerating. Newton's first law says an object in, an object that has balanced force acting on it isn't going to move. It's going to remain in a constant state of motion. So you're sitting still. Okay, so the spring force up is equal to the, your weight down. That's what your scale reads. Okay, so we're going to do kind of a, a we're going to do a math problem here as a sample. There are some questions like math questions to look at on your formative assessment to make sure that you're understanding what's going on. So we have these two people that are essentially fighting over a stuffed dog. The dog has a mass of 0.3 kilograms. Um, one girl wants to pull it. Once one girl pulls. With a force of 10 newtons, the other one pulls with a force of 11 newtons in the opposite direction. We're going to figure out the acceleration of the dog. It's going to require a couple different math problems. 
Um, and there's going to be some example, samples on how to do this. All right. So if we look at the drawing here, okay, so we have the, the toy dog in the middle. One girl's pulling one way, the other girl's pulling the opposite direction. So what we know, we know the mass of the dog. We know the forces. And what we don't know is the acceleration. Okay, so again, we know, here's what we know. We know the mass, we know these forces. What we want to figure out is how much is this dog going to be, this little stuffed animal dog accelerating. So the net force is adding up the two, the two forces. But one of the forces is going to be the opposite direction of the other. So because they're going in opposite directions, you're going to have to subtract them. So acceleration then is going to be the force net divided by mass. That's Newton's second law. So if we substitute, okay, because our force net is the sum of these, or really subtracting them, divided by the mass is going to get me my acceleration. Okay, so then if we put in the numbers, we get 11 newtons minus 10 newtons divided by 0.3 kilograms gives me an acceleration of 3.3 meters per second squared. Okay. The difference of the forces divided by the mass gets me my acceleration. If you want to go back and watch this a couple of times to see how I did that, go for it. Um, again, there's a sample problem on the formative assessment to help you with this. Okay, so it's going to go 3.3 meters towards Anuja, the one with applying the larger force. Okay, so if we look at the answers here, so we need to make sure everything's in the right units, and it's going to go with the larger force. So it's going in the right, correct direction. Okay, now, Newton's third law talks about for every force, there's an, op there's an equal and opposite force. Called an, they're called the force pairs. Okay, so when you exert a force on, on your friend, they exert a force back on you. Same thing that happens on the floor. When you push on the floor, the floor pushes you in the opposite direction. Okay? They're an interaction pair. They're, they're called a force pair. Okay? They're opposite directions, and they have equal magnitudes. So, like, these. And if you notice, I'll notice how they're worded. So, if we have two objects, A and B, this one is the force from A on B, so we're going to assume it kind of B's over here. And... So A on A on B and B on A. So there are, there are two forces acting on two uh, two different objects as the, as they touch. Okay. Sometimes they're called action reaction pairs. Um, one does not cause the other. Um, if you think of it just as force pairs, that's the best way to think about it. They're force pairs, and they always have to be. Um, they're always in pairs. Forces always come in pairs because you cannot have a force without pushing on something. And then there's going to be a reaction, there's going to be a force pair to go along with it. Okay. And again, the two forces exist together or not at all. You can't have one force. There's always two forces acting. Okay. One on, op you know, one on either object that's having an interaction. Okay. So as long as two things are in contact, you have that, you have that force pair. Okay, so again, Newton's third law that says which that states all forces come in pairs. Okay, and they're equal and opposite. So, f the f of one is equal to the equal and opposite force of the other one. That's why one is positive, one is negative. Okay, so if we look at this, think of it this way: the gravitational force between the Earth and the Sun are equal. The force from the sun on the earth is equal to the, sun, the force of the earth on the sun. If it, they weren't equal, one would be flying into each other. They would be flying into each other, which doesn't happen. Okay. So when a softball with a mass of 0.18 kilograms is dropped, its acceleration towards earth is, e, is g, the acceleration due to gravity, about 10 meters per second squared. 
what is the force on Earth due to the ball, and what is the Earth's resulting acceleration? So we have the mass of the ball and the mass of the Earth. So now we're going to figure out the accelerations of the objects using Newton's second law. Okay, so we're going to draw a free body diagram. So here's our two objects. We have a softball. We have a force on force of Earth on the ball, force on the ball on the Earth. And notice the vectors are equal. They're equal because we, due to Newton's third law of motion, they have to be equal and opposite, the forces. Okay, so we know the mass of the ball. We know the mass of the Earth. We know the acceleration of the gravity on the ball. Okay, what we're going to figure out is the force of the Earth on ball and the acceleration of the Earth. That's right, you're going to see that the Earth does accelerate. Okay, so again, there's what we're looking for. Okay, so here's what we know. Newton's third law says that, there's, that the forces are equal and opposite. So the force on the Earth, the force on from the Earth on the ball is equal to the mass of the ball times acceleration. We're going to do this instead. So we're figuring out, essentially we're figuring out the weight of the ball, the force acting on the ball from the Earth, the weight of the ball. Okay, so the mass of the ball, 0.18 kilograms, times acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. Gets me a force of the Earth and the ball of 1.8 newtons. Now that also is the force of the ball on the Earth because of Newton's third law of motion. Okay, so they're equal and opposite forces. Okay, which means the force of the from the ball, Earth on ball, or the force of the ball on the Earth are the same, 1.8 newtons. So now, we have the force of the earth acting on the Earth, 1.8 newtons. Now we're going to use Newton's second law. We know the force, and we know the mass. So because we know the force, and we know the mass, we can solve for the acceleration. And it's really, 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 really tiny. 2.9 times 10 to the negative 25th, really, really tiny. And you should know that, yeah. Because most of you are thinking, it doesn't move. You're right, it doesn't move very much, because this is... Point is 24 zeros to 9 squared towards a, towards a softball. It's not moving very fast at all, which makes sense if you do the evaluation. So dimensional analysis verifies that Newton's, yep, signs make sense, and the magnitude is realistic. The Earth doesn't move very much at all, okay? So the last thing on this is what's called the normal force, okay? The normal force always acts perpendicular to a surface. So anything sitting on a table the normal force is pointing up, okay? The normal force is, pull, is pointing up, in the, uh, perpendicular to the surface, okay? And we're going to use the normal force to calculate various things when we get into friction and in other forces. But this is a special type of force called the normal force. It's the force pushing up from the surface. And typically, the normal force and the weight when, when the surface is parallel are equal. And that's the end of, the, of this presentation. Um, make sure you're answering the questions on the formative assessment. And if you have questions, which I'm sure you do on this one, because there's a lot of information here, please write a question on the bottom of the Google form. Thank you very much, and we'll see you in class.